Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be making a vintage monogram logo using Adobe Illustrator. Let's get started. Okay, in order to make a monogram logo in Illustrator, we want to understand what a monogram is. Usually a monogram is a portrayal of someone's initials or their business name in a way to interwove them and create a stamp out of the letters of their name. So what we want to do is find a way to interwove these shapes together that we're going to be making out of the letters. There are hundreds of ways you can do this, but I'm going to show you a very simple way of using rectangles. We're going to take our rectangle tool and start by making a long rectangle here. We're going to make sure it's selected and we're going to hold alt and drag it down about that much. We're going to hold alt and drag that one we just made down and stop at a point where you see these pink arrows over here on the right. That will show that they're evenly spaced apart. I'm going to copy it again and turn this one until our degree symbol there next to our turning point shows about 63. I'm going to move it up and copy it over. And then we're going to flip the new one horizontally. Line it up about like that so it makes a diamond shape out of the two uh, angled shapes that we just made. Let's move it up a bit so that we create a triangle shape about right there above the three lines we have. I'm going to have them both selected, go to our shape builder and remove those two top parts and then control G to group these two. I'm going to select everything and make sure it's aligned to center. Okay, now we're gonna make a small rectangle by using this as a guide, making one about that big, moving it down here and aligning it with the left side of these three lines we have here and making sure it creates a foot to the bottom of our angled lines. I'm going to copy it over, do the same thing over here, and keep it like that. Okay, now we're going to copy this again. Turn it to a 90 degree angle by holding shift as you turn. Lining it up with the edge. And shrinking it down horizontally or vertically to create a left side to our E. This middle part is our E, and this top part, uh, this part going through the middle is our A. Okay, we're going to make another small shape by creating one half the size of this rectangle we made for the foot of the A. I'm going to move this off. And we're going to make ends to our E over here. Uh, a good way to make monograms, as you've been seeing me do, is when you're making these custom shapes, when you're not using a font, uh, is good to make a serif uh, effect on your letters by adding little foots to the uh, ends of your letters. It helps pop out some details and it lets you properly identify the letters that you're using. Okay, now we want to make sure all of our shapes are combined properly. Actually, no, you don't have to use the shape builder tool to combine all these shapes. You can go to uh, and go to your Pathfinder tool and hit Unite. And it will automatically uh, shape build all of the shapes that you have selected if they overlap. Uh, we want to do this for the separate letters, not all the shapes together. So we're going to select only the parts of our A and only parts of our E and do that same thing. Okay, now we want to make a way to where our lines will uh, interwove with each other to show some space and some really cool decorative uh, effects here. So we're going to take a rectangle tool, make sure our fill is set to white. We're going to make a small rectangle he down here. We're going to use that same size shape to keep going here and create a space so that this line can pass through this negative space here 
to make it as if it's going over the A's leg. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side up here. And if you ever come across a point where your lines just aren't snapping to the proper line that you want, even if you have smart guides on under view, uh, you want to hit Control Y, zoom in, and make sure that your lines are perfectly overlapping, like right there. You can hit Control Y again to show all of your proper shapes. Okay, and now that we have these horizontal negative spaces going on here, we want to make vertical ones. It's a little harder since I have um, angles going on here, and it's hard to uh, properly turn things to a degree if I didn't track what degree I turn these A legs to. So we're going to take our pen tool and estimate by going here, hitting shift, dragging it down to this corner, hitting escape, taking your selection tool and copying it over by holding shift to make going a straight line and make one that's about the same size as the white we made here. About right there is good. You want to select them both by holding shift and clicking on them. Go to our, our pen tool and connect these lines. We want to copy this, put it over here, and just like before with trying to find our lines, it's even harder when there are angled lines here so your shapes aren't going to snap properly. So we're going to hit Control y and make sure these are lined up. Sometimes the tiniest little space can be there and it can annoy you like me. So we're going to make sure it's right. About right there is good. Gonna copy this down, I'm gonna flip it horizontally. We're gonna make the same effect over here. Control Y to make sure you can line it up. Copy it over and line it up again. Now you can select everything, and we can make this one solid shape. We can hold Alt to remove all white space that we've made. This will permanently create the negative shapes in our logo here, so that we don't have to worry about those anymore. And now with all this together, you can go to Align. It hit unite. Uh, it will set it will set the fill to your entire shape to whatever fill you have set on. And since I was just using white, it's now white, so I'm gonna change it to black. Oops. Make sure it's all selected properly. Then you can. There you go. Okay, our monogram is almost finished. The way I've done it here is I've interwoven it so it looks like it's going in and out in between the lines using this negative space. And I've left this middle part solid so it looks like our letters are connected at one point. It's sometimes good to have a connection somewhere and it makes it look very, very good. Uh, there's actually one thing I forgot to do. So I'm going to actually delete this end of the E here. So it creates a perfect line here and stops here to make it look like this is the middle part of the A. I'm just going to use our pen tool, select it all, and then remove it with the shape builder. And there we go. Now I'm going to add one little detail to it. I'm going to take our direct selection tool, click on the corners that I am selecting here. I'm cl clicking on very specific ones. Hold shift to make sure all of them are selected at the same time. And we're going to take these little blue circles here. And when they're all selected, we can drag it. And it'll curve all of them. Curve it to a point where they turn red. That's the maximum that all of them together can turn to. 
you know, create some very interesting curves here. Wait, let me add one more. There we go, I want that top part of the A. Don't have to turn it too much. And there we have it, all done. Now there's one extra detail you can add to this. I'm going to shrink this down. I'm going to copy it down. I'm going to set both of these to blue. I really like the color blue for this. Makes it look like a sports logo. I'm going to add a grunge texture to this to make it look very vintage and as if it's old or on a hat or something. So we're going to go over here. I have a set of free grunge textures that I've gotten from Red Pig Design. I want to thank Red Pig Design for supplying these for free. I want to uh, thank Mohamed Akraf for uh, showing these in his tutorial for how to make a monogram logo and linking them to uh, his fans. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to leave a link to his channel and to Red Pig Design's free grunge textures in the description. I'm going to click on this. Hit Control C to copy. I'm going to select this, go to our transparency window, hit make mask, and make sure clip is set to off and invert mask is on. I'm going to click on this white square here and hit Control V to paste. I'm going to resize this now. The way this works is that it's created vectors for every single little dot you see here. And that can overload your Illustrator a bit. It's already making me lag just a bit, so be careful using this. And we're gonna resize it a bit. Resizing will definitely slow it down a lot more, but it's necessary to get these proper scratches and dirt effects on our logo. So we're gonna deselect it now. Go back to our left image here. Make sure you do that so you can edit anything else. And with that, it looks completely finished. It looks really good. We're going to have them side by side so you can see the difference. And with that, we are done. Thank you for watching. If you learned anything, leave a like and subscribe. Thank you.